My name is Samil Shaw, and I'm the founder of Energaya uh, Company Limited here in Thailand. And we produce sustainable spirulina, which is a microalgae that is a superfood. Microalgae are single-celled plants. It grows really, really fast. It removes carbon from the atmosphere and produces oxygen as it grows. So it's very beneficial to the environment. And microalgae in the ocean still uptake 50% or more of the world's carbon dioxide as the natural environmental processes. What we're trying to do is grow algae for a specific purpose, which is to make sustainable human food and animal feed products. And we've chosen spirulina because it's easy to harvest and it's also, most importantly, got a fantastic nutritional profile. You know, today, microalgae products like spirulina are sold just as vitamin tablets at a very high price. So they're not mainstream consumer uh, goods, they're specialized nutraceuticals. And we are really trying to, to revolutionize the space by making spirulina more mainstream consumer friendly. And we are providing spirulina to get customers now as a fresh paste. So it's uh, closer to the way kind of nature intended you to, to eat it, but it's, it's perishable so you, you need to refrigerate it. One of the great things about it, which is different from some of the um, other products around the world, is ours doesn't impact the taste of the food product at all. So we want to make it available in grocery stores, and, and we want to expand to have it available as a product not only in Thailand, but in other countries all around the world. One of the main things that's limiting spirulina's consumption today is production. Pretty much all spirulina is grown today in either two ways, either in natural lakes, where it tends to grow anyway, but there you have a risk of contamination with other algae species or other things like bacteriums, whatever, higher probability. Or it's grown in open pond farmed systems, uh, you know, where people create these concrete lined ponds and they, they have spirulina growing in there. So they kind of make an artificial lake where they can control it a little bit better. Still open to atmosphere and, and it grows well, but it grows a bit slowly and it's still not the most ideal environment from a controllability perspective. What we've come up with is kind of a more revolutionary design that uh, we've leveraged from uh, other parts of the industry, growing, trying to grow other strains of algae. But we have focused on fixing some of the design issues with cost and ease of setup, ease of operation, operability. And we've kind of perfected this design. And now uh, it's a closed system bioreactor. And we can use it not only uh, out in areas where there's land at agricultural facilities like rice mills or tapioca mills or power plants but we can kind of fit our system wherever we need to on whatever land is available at these you know existing agricultural or industrial facilities and we can tap in and take some of the exhaust co2 that they have and use it as an inorganic carbon source for our algae so we, we get a kind of double benefit for the environment there recycling this waste co2 the other benefit of our design is we can leverage it to urban farming. So we can use it within a city on a flat rooftop at a smaller scale to produce spirulina locally and then sell it within the city as food product. The population is growing rapidly, right? By 2050, we're going to go from 7 billion to 9 billion people. And a lot of those people are urbanizing. But, you know, that means that they need a sustainable food supply, right? We can't continue to grow food outside of the cities and try to truck it in. It's just a very difficult model to sustain with populations as they get that large. I don't expect people to stop using electricity or flying, right? That's not practical. So what we want to do is try to find solutions where we can offset these things that we, we need, you know, uh, like power and, and, and ease of travel, you know, offset their carbon footprint with, with other things like sustainable food production that is CO2 absorbing, you know, some more plant-based food products. So we feel like growing spirulina, because it grows so fast, it doubles, you know, uh, in mass content every two to four days. Um, so it's much faster growing than any other vegetable, right? Spinach, tomatoes, strawberries, you know, fruits, veggies, whatever. You're not going to find them growing that fast. We could grow a lot of spirulina to, to feed a lot of people and we can absorb a lot of carbon dioxide by doing that and it's so good for you. We really feel like this is the way to make urban agriculture viable.